So, so just a couple of these pointers, which I go into some detail in the lecture, in the course, um, which really just unpack, you know, not only that exponential growth curve, but some more specific examples of how that happens and what the forces are at play. And then we mentioned, you know, financial services and banking, and um, you know, a couple of of, of uh, thoughts on this topic. Uh, you know, on the left hand side there, what we've seen is, um, you know, telecommunications using their networks and using their accessibility, you know, to customers, then to, you know, add payments and add money transfer and add, you know, those um, more financially inclusive types of products um, to their customers um, in a hope of, you know, d you know, eating away at the market share of the dominant banks. And our response, I guess, has been to build similar products um, as well as then to offer the connectivity. So you'll see, for example, FMB offering its own connector customer offering, uh, which we um, run off of the Sol C network. As you know, if you've got an FMB SIM card, um, you know, we obviously are then the over the top um, provider of your mobile value network, but it's still then the utility of Sol C on the back end. So you get this weird. Um, cross-pollination of utility and over-the-top. Um, the telco try and provide the over-the-top service of the banking um, and then are the utility of the network and the bank provides the telco and they have the utility on the on the telco, uh, the telco providers on the telco networks. So everyone is playing in everybody else's space and Bitcoin has come along and said, well, you know, forget about existing um, business models and players. You know, here is a brand new decentrally managed model for the storing and the exchange of value. And it's one in which doesn't require a third party to underwrite that transaction, simply because the, the power in the algorithm of, of the blockchain network and what's called the proof of work is that everybody can see everybody else's transactions. And the blockchain is literally a series of blocks of transactions that are mathematically uh, un, um, unchangeable, okay? Those, those transactions cannot be manipulated because of the mathematics of that original blockchain paper that was written. And that mathematics persists in the blockchain today. What you see is the use cases of blockchain coming through in uh, different cryptocurrencies. We spoke about cryptocurrencies earlier and you have Bitcoin and Ethereum and lots of other are just use cases of blockchain. And what's important, I think, for, for us to understand is the power of the blockchain, is the power of the network, is the power of the indisputable law of the wisdom of the crowd. You know, so if Calvin and I are in a bar and uh, I buy Calvin a drink and the next day he, I, he, I said, you know, you know, did you, you know, how was your beer last night? And he says, no, you didn't buy me a drink. Well, I can turn to our buddy John standing on the left. And I said, well, I did buy Calvin a drink, you know. So there's the power of the crowd that says, well, I can't dispute the transaction because everybody saw the transaction. Now, where people have lost faith in banks, and we saw this in 2008 with, with the global banking crisis, was it because banks said, trust us, trust us. You know, we're the underwriting participant in all financial transactions so that you can't fail. Actually, when they did fail, there was almost systemic failure, and the governments obviously had to step in to protect the banking system. Blockchain is a very uh, – well, cryptocurrency is a, is a usage of blockchain as a response to that to say, well, let, let the networks decide. Let the networks verify the transactions. Let the value be uh, stored and transmitted in technology. And let us prove that the network can keep that, net, that, that, that blockchain store and exchange of value as incorruptible and do a better job of it than the banks can. And I think what you'll see going forward is most probably banks adopting um, blockchain-based products and participating in you know, more closed blockchain ecosystems. Um, there are certainly a lot of use cases using blockchain, for example, in trade and um, deeds management and you know, other more uh, non-money-based transactions for which we need to keep an undisputed record of. So share trading, for example, investments, et cetera. The idea of replacing money with, with cryptocurrencies, you know, I think is one that will still have quite a long way to run. But could I envisage a world where on the FAB app, you can manage your uh, Bitcoin um, balance? Oh, no, it's not inconceivable. I mean, we already do um, 
you know, you can buy a lot of tickets, you know, on your app. So again, it's going to be the race for dominance in ecosystems of customers where you can provide simple and intuitive services for them to, to manage their lives better.